Okay, so in this episode, we're going to look at painting um, figures. Very basic. This is not a mass class tutorial, nothing like that. It's just um, basic figure painting, which is something that a lot of people can put off, um, and it can be worrying. And here we've got a uh, well, pretty basic um, pilot from the Tamiya. Spitfire, as in the old version, so the uh, one from the 90s. This is the Mark V Trop. And um, you get a pilot in there who is wearing shorts. And um, as you can see, I've assembled it. It's just one arm, I think, that goes on. The rest of it is one, one figure. And I've positioned that with the chair um, all set up in the cockpit. So actually, you know, he, he does grab the control stick. So what we've got here is pretty much a, a simple simple way into this because we've got a khaki uniform uh, top and bottom uh, including socks from what I understand and then the um, we've got sort of shoes on there so these aren't boots which would be black I'm imagining or brown and then we've got quite a lot of skin areas so we've got the knees and the thighs the forearms and the face um, so to start off and I would suggest this with any figure, you know, the main colour that's going to be in there, this being khaki, um, is to just spray it that. So you've you've kind of blocked it in that colour. So that's what I've done, sprayed all the uh, areas that are, all the skin tone areas, and now we're ready to go. So the paints I'm going to use for this is um, a little bit different to what we usually use for scale modelling, and I'm going to use um, the Citadel paints because I do paint a few figures here and there from the Citadel range and I've um, stocked up on their paints uh, to try that. Now they do uh, base, layer, shade, um, I think there's another one as well. So there's the base and layer. And then this is the shade, like that for instance. So um, what we're really looking at is the base is quite a thick pigmented acrylic paint and it's designed that obviously that's your base coat so that's meant to go on in, in one or two uh, light thin coats and then the layer paint is a little bit more transparent and the idea for that is that goes over the base coat and lets a bit of that um, shine through because it's a thinner less pigmented paint and that's that's the idea that's how Citadel want you to do it um, so you you know you can use your base paint then you can use um, probably a shade to give depth so this is a, an acrylic wash so it can be a bit um, complicated because uh, where we usually use oil washes and they're, they're workable and you can remove them pretty much once this is dried it's very hard to get off uh, so you, you, the idea is um, here if we take the concept that we've just used the base paint on this we would then go over with a wash which would filter all of it so it would change the tone of um, everything uh, because it won't come off but it will pull up in the recesses and then the idea again there is if you want the base color you can then go back over and highlight certain areas with the base color or you'd use one of these layer paints uh, which just, just slightly changes the shade and um, pick out some high points and then using another layer of paint so if I take what I got here um, basically free really so you can see um, so you'd go with your base coat and then you'd layer on with this one so that's a uh, Talon sand so you just pick out some high points which is actually a little bit darker than this so more of a richer color but as I say the base um, this uh, Zandri dust will actually come through that a little bit and then once you've done that, you can go on with something like this one. So this uh, Ushabti Bone, oh, these names are ridiculous, I think, but <laughs> it's, um, this would then really be your very high highlights. And then you could then again go back over with a shade if you wanted to, um, just to alter some of that and then go back over with some of the highlights and you just keep going on like this until you're happy. So that's what I'm going to do with the uniform. And then the similar thing is going to happen on the skin tone. So we've got a very dark, rich skin tone. So uh, all of the skin areas, once I've done the uniform, will be blocked in with the Cadian flesh tone. Then we will use a... Which one is it? This one. Uh, the uh, Reckland flesh shade. So we'll just give all of the skin areas a wash of that. 
which will uh, deepen um, the colour and also that will sit in any um, of the defined bits where we got uh, a little bit of recessing around the kneecap and um, on the forearm and in the fingers and around the face, that sort of thing. And then we'll highlight with Kislev Flesh. Then there is, that's when you can start to get a little bit um, experimental then and then go on and mix up some of your own colours. So then you can actually, with a wet palette, which we'll look at in a second, use uh, this one and mix it with that one, for instance. So you could then use some of that, maybe uh, you'd use Kislev Fesh maybe right on the um, spine of the nose, bridge of the nose, if you know what I mean, the, the very high point of the nose. But then you might do a kind of 60-40% mix and um, do that down the side of the nose where it's a little bit darker. And then on the crease where the nose actually joins the cheek, you'd probably want just a bit of that just a line of that showing so you'd leave that for instance that's how this works that's the concept that's the idea behind it so uh you know let's have a look at how we're going to do it so i mentioned a wet palette and you may know what that is or you may wonder what it is so we've got a tupperware box here the lid is just a lid uh, we don't use the lid it's not like we uh, fold that over so here you can see this is dried up now um and if i get one of my figures oh blimey so what I was doing uh, probably a month ago, I guess, um, I uh, like, what well, I've always collected since I was uh, quite young, some of the Lord of the Rings figures out of the Warhammer kind of range. I've never really been into the Warhammer, never been into 40k or any of that, or even playing the game, if I'm honest. It is not really about that, but I do absolutely love the Lord of the Rings. I love the story. The idea behind it, everything about it, the films, the books, the whole lot, it's a, it's a world I'm very um, keen on. So uh, when I was a child, you know, I uh, collected a lot of the figures, usually with that um, magazine, that Battle Games in Middle Earth thing, I think. That's where, I, you know, they've been in a box and then they go away for 10 years and then they come out again. And I thought, um, as a side from doing some of the models, uh, it's actually quite nice just to sit and paint them and I've never been able to get them sorted so let's actually, uh, this is good enough for me so this is what I'd like to get to. So I mean the, the thought of me being able to paint these to this standard is perfectly fine for me so it's kind of unlocked a different world where uh, I've got all these blooming miniatures that um, it's just unpainted, so there is a chance that uh, going forward there might be a, a, you know, in the next couple of years I might be able to get some of them painted up. And this is just using the Games Workshop method. So here we've got a Hobbit, which is obviously very small. I started on this because uh, if I thought if I could do this then the the, the, the man figures, for instance, are, are quite a lot bigger. So, you know, it's easier. Now if we can get into his face, maybe may be able to see. This is a Farmer Maggot, if you're interested. And he's got a couple dogs that come with him. So here I've just used the techniques I've mentioned really. Um, and you can see the kind of depth that you get on this. Uh, it's kind of like a white, uh, um, I don't know what you'd call it, like an apron I suppose, over his sort of grey undergarment I, I imagine. That's how I sort of saw it. So um, it, it, no point is this one colour. You know, yes the garment looks white, but with the depth it's mainly beige. And it's got those colours going on it. And then in the hair again, that's a um, one of these shade washes. So it's painted a kind of blonde colour. And then the wash has gone on, which changes it. And then you just highlight over the top. And it's very simple, effective. There's nothing special to it. This isn't like um, painting busts and anything like that. That's a whole different ball game. I'm just really talking about, you know, basic figure painting that from a distance it looks like a face. And um, it looks like a figure for instance and from here you can see on the face where well, you've got a little bit of depth around the nose and in the eyes it's not really about getting a um a pupil or anything like that or showing teeth or or lips really it's more hinting at it and your, your mind kind of makes up the um fills in the gaps that's what i find so as long as it looks like it as you get there um it starts to kind of come together you know it's just getting stuff in the recess like up in where that ear is under the hair just leaving that dark uh, does does the trick so that's what we're going to uh, try and attempt and um the reason i brought that out is because that is what i was using this wet palette for and that's why it's dried up so what a wet palette is is simply uh, a place that stays moist and keeps your paints workable for longer now 
We are all going down the Citadel range, and I've got to be perfectly honest with you, if you're starting figure painting, it might be worth just starting with oils or something like that, because it's so much easier. <laughs> uh, but the trouble is, everyone sort of sees Citadel and goes down, down that line, and I'm, I'm almost certain that Citadel have only used their paint range uh, as acrylic because it's easy to, for them to sell, and it's easy for them to store, and, you know, you have to keep buying it. Because if they sold a tube of oil paint, you know, you'd go in there, buy one tube, and you'd never need one again. I can only imagine it, because it's almost like the, one of the worst mediums you could pick to paint figures or anything with. If I'm honest, brush painting, it's, it's awful stuff. But, you know, there's ways around making it work. So because it dries fast, it being an acrylic, it um, you need this. So what a wet palette is, is a Tupperware box with... I cut out a couple of pieces of kitchen roll, uh, which, I, yes, kitchen roll, <laughs> sorry, it doesn't look like kitchen roll, and then you just cut out a piece of greaseproof paper, okay, you wet the kitchen roll, now I'm going to need to redo this, so we'll do that, I'm going to do it as a, a little, just a quick tutorial on how to make one of these, so uh, two fresh pieces of kitchen roll in there, um, and then a piece of uh, parchment, greaseproof paper, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's got the shiny um, aspect to it and it kind of repels the water and that's what you want. So what this does is once you've wetted the kitchen roll and it's damp, not sitting in water. So it needs to be, you know, you want to be touching it and your fingers being wet, but they're not to be a pool of water. You push the greaseproof paper onto it like that and you push it down and the water will start to come around the side and leach through and it will make the greaseproof paper damp. And then when you get your um, paint out, so you shake it and you put a couple brush strokes on here um, and that then is your palette. And you can water that down or th this isn't meant to be watering it down, it's meant to keep it moist. That's the only thing. Um, and then you would then take from here and then you could, uh, what I've been doing as you can see, so this is where I've had that brown colour and um, I've maybe kept the, the, the actual pool of um, pure paint there and then thinned it down a little bit here, stroking it out. And then I've mixed it here with a different colour and taken two and, and that's how you go on. So it's, it's a very easy way to go around it really. So I'm going to go and make one of these now. I'm going to do that as a uh, separate video. So that will be up on the channel probably before this one. And you may well have seen it. And then we'll crack on with painting the figure. If you use this tiny brush here, uh, you know, that's going to be okay for around the face. Like that. But you wouldn't want to use it to do all this because you'd have to be going all the way around for ages. So it'd be much better to use something, even though it seems to go against everything, use a brush more like that. Which would be, you know, maybe two you'd probably be able to do the whole lot around there, blocked in and under there, um, and then only have to go back um, once or twice. And you can use expensive brushes, but for, for this, you know, you really, c it, you know, these are cheap brushes I've got here, and uh, there's no nothing wrong with them. So that's what I use. I used to go and buy expensive brushes, but personally I found um, these cheap brushes, you know, a pack of whatever craft brushes here, I don't even know where I got these from. Uh, the the Dale Roundley um, craft uh, brushes. I think they were like you know four quid for five brushes. So uh, you know just just experiment, see what see what it's like. And this is the the idea, you know, that you want to be able to go around there. Now when you come to do the belts, obviously you wouldn't want to use something like this. That is when this would be the right type of brush to go in there and just kind of catch the tops like that. So that's something to think about. So let's start with, I think, probably just a wash, actually. So we've already base coated uh, there. So I'm going to go in straight with Agrax Earthshade, which is a kind of brown wash. So we don't actually need the uh, palette for that, after all that. So I um, want a large... What brush was it I wanted to use? I'm going to use a large wash brush, so uh, something like this. Which does seem over the top, but it'll it'll be fine. So I've soaked up quite a bit onto the brush, as you can see, and we just run around all the way in there. Just kind of let it do its thing with capillary action. Um, and there, you know, the reason I'm doing the uniform first is because 
once that's done and signed off on, uh, then we can go on and do the uh, flesh areas. And then we've got sharp lines to go against then, so we've got, you know, the, the cuff, for instance, to go up against. And then if we go over it, it should only just be a little bit. I'm actually going to do the socks. I'm just going to use the, the base coat for, for all of it. I imagine the socks, it's, you know, the uniform's the same kind of colour. That's my assumption. Do let me know if it was different. Should be looking at a picture. But this is, like I said, this is a buddy build. So, I mean, you know, um, not that I want it to be rubbish, but uh, pressure's off a little bit. That's where this one's designed for. If it was going to be a figure that kind of makes the um, makes the model, it might be a bit different. So there we go. I'm purposely leaving the hat because I'm going to do that differently. I'm going to have that probably as a leather, so a bit darker. So I want to base coat that in a minute. Now, hopefully, you can already see what that's doing. It's given nice definition, and it's totally changed the, the shade. So it's a filter and a wash. So we'll come back when that's dried off. And as we're waiting for the wash to dry, I'm going to start with um, blocking in some of the browns. So we've got that uh, kind of, uh, I don't know what you call it, helmet, hat, something like that, um, and the socks. So I'm going to do those both in the same brown. So I'm using a very dark... Uh, kind of leather brown, I suppose. It's called Doom Brawl, Doom Ball Brown, if you're interested. So I've put it in the wet palette, and then just with some water, I'm just going to pull that across just to thin it down. So I'm then going to pull from the thinned bit, and I'm going to make sure the brush gets totally nice and covered in it, and then I'm going to just see how we're going, and it looks all right there. So, we are just going to do the socks this colour as well, actually. I decided to change after looking at a bit of references. So you want to get it right down over the shoe, uh, and you could even get it over the top as well, so that it uh, gets into, um, you know, make sure it's over where the skin colour is going to be. And then, then you know you've got um, good coverage over both those areas. That's the idea behind it. You don't want to then have to go back because you, you find you've missed a section as you come to do either the skin tone or the shoe. Now I apologise, we may go out of focus here. I can't do a lot about it. I've got manual focus on this camera so I'll try and edit out as much as I can but if you just bear with me, you know, it will soon come back into focus. I know it's annoying. Um, so if we get under there, figure painting is actually very difficult to do on camera, certainly in my setup, because you're always moving it. I like to work from a, an actual point where um, I know it's in focus, if that makes sense, and then keep coming back to it. So now we need a little bit more water just to pull and thin the next bit where we've used it up. So now we're going to do that around the hat. And um, what I want to do is try and keep very tight definition around the jacket. But we don't need to worry about the face so much. You don't want to plaster it over the face if you don't have to. Um, but you just want to be careful when you come to getting in close. Uh, now this Doom Brawl Brown is actually a layer paint. And because I haven't put the base coat on, uh, it's showing that khaki colour through a little bit. And that just goes to show the sort of transparency of it. So I may have to do two layers to get a nice um, good coverage. Uh, I actually usually use something like Whole Red from Tamiya or something like that for for doing the base colours. And it's simple stuff, I mean the concept is, you know, you do a dark colour and you come up through the shades um, and then the more shades you apply to it the better it looks. That's, that's as simple as what it is really. Um, as with anything, the more detail you add to a model uh, the better it looks. If you only just paint free colours for the camouflage, stick the decals on and say it's done. It doesn't look quite as good as if you, you know, vary the colours and maybe use six or seven colours to make up your camouflage colour and, and on it goes. Um, and then use oils and weathering and it's the same concept. And if you keep at it, it can be a bit daunting, but if you keep just painting, 
and then going back over with another colour and then going back over with a different colour then and then touching this bit up and that bit up all of a sudden it just looks how you want it to look that's on the basic stuff there's obviously a lot more skill to um, if you want to start doing busts and that sort of thing this is a different whole different different kettle of fish really so um, we've got the stark base colours there now so uh, once these have dried off we want to put their um, separate wash on as well so I'll probably use something like uh, maybe the Reclam Flesh shade or oh, it'd be sepia that's it Seraphim sepia for browns it's kind of a reddy brown colour okay so I've started to block in some of the colours now and um, we saw just putting on the leather I've blocked in some of the black parts as well so we've got the ear covers I guess they're called uh, the goggles as well and this mouthpiece seems to be black from what I can see so it's at this stage now I've given um, the brown parts a wash with seraphim sepia and I've given the black parts a wash with known oil and the khaki parts a wash with agrat's earth shade so we're all up to the same point on all of those the thing to do now is block in the flesh colours now I did get it wrong I missed off one um, the flesh colour goes Bugman's Glow, Cadian uh, Flesh Tone and Kislev Flesh so we saw these two which are the kind of fleshy tones now Bugman Glow, Bugman's Glow starts off very very dark kind of um, I don't know what you call it like a peachy kind of colour so um, I'm going to apply that now on all of the flesh areas to, to block in and then um, we'll try and then keep quite tight as we go in to start uh, doing any highlighting we can actually um, try not to go over any of the areas now and stay within the boundaries of each colour so here we are with Bugman's Glow applied and uh, Reckland Flesh Shade uh, painted all over it now he does look a little bit like he's just come straight out of Chernobyl but um, We've got to persevere, keep going, and it'll all come together at the end. That's what you've got to. That's what you've got to re remember with this. That um, as long as you keep going, eventually it'll all look okay. <laughs> he says. So next up, I'm going to, I think, start highlighting some of uh, this uh, this top here. So for that, I think the first colour I shall use is. Hmm. Probably uh, Talarn Sand um, because it's only a little bit lighter than the actual base colour. So we'll just pick out all the highlights and we'll see where that leaves us. And now for that, so this is where I go back to my uh, fine brush. This is what that's very good for. So I've got a very, very fine point on this. And I've thinned the paint down quite a lot. And I only do a little bit and then I'll do most of it off camera because we'll probably go out of focus. So if I just pick, um, it's good to check how we are. It's a bit wet, a bit too wet. So let's have a look. It's always worth just checking before you go to the model because you want to be getting quite fine lines. You want to get a feel for it. So I just want to kind of pick off that bit there on the collar and maybe some of these creases now you could do this a different way and you could just dry brush it which uh, gives a similar effect but it's less controllable so I mean I like to do it like this it's quite therapeutic um, and when there where there isn't creases where you might have sanded it down or it's just uh, not molded correctly you can just put lines in just to check and there you can see already how that's highlighting that so I'll go over the rest of this and then we'll um, have a look back in and see where we are now as I thought uh, for what we're doing here that's perfectly fine so what I've just done there is just gone over I've made up some of the um, strokes and creases there but you can you know you can see what it does on the arm there it just gives you some definition makes it look creased that's plenty good enough for what I want here um, once certainly once I've painted in the straps it'll all just tie it together so I'm gonna now go on and do the leather parts and for that um, I already painted it as we saw 
Doom Ball Brown. So now I'm just going to again highlight with Tusk or Fur. And um, hopefully it should have the same effect. Now interestingly for me uh, that brown didn't work very well. It gave a highlight but it wasn't the right sort of colour that I wanted. So I've gone back over with the, um, once doing the highlights, with the Seraphim Sepia which has then toned it back down exactly where we want it. So instead of just having the one block of colour there's variation as you look through it. So that's another way of doing it. So you can then highlight and actually overcoat again. So this is a nice colour match, so we didn't need to overcoat. The um, the leather colour wasn't the greatest colour match, so I've needed to overcoat again to tie all of that in. So that's another way around it. Now we're on to the flesh. So um, where do we go from here? <laughs> this, is where, this is what we're all here for. It's easy enough to paint the rest of it. Um, we're going to go on Macadian Flesh Tone and I'll um, see if I can do some of this on camera. Okay, so we take a deep breath and we hope for the best. So I'm going to start somewhere easy, down on the knees. So uh, just, you, what you're doing here is painting everything apart from the recesses really. So, um, and even if you do catch the recesses it's not an issue. Uh, but you want to try and stay within the lines now as in not get any on the shorts. So um, again this is showing why you shouldn't use a thin small brush for large areas because you get a lot more brush strokes. If you just um, used a large brush you'd get sort of all of this in one or two strokes so that's another reason for it. Uh, but as long as your paint's thin it should be okay. So I'm losing focus here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going on in um, sort of small bits. So I'll do this off of camera and um, I'll just do this leg, knee on camera and then I'll just um, block all the colours in and then you'll, we'll see what the effect is. And this is the first of the layer colours. So that's all instantly sort of stopped it looking a bit silly now, isn't it? Right, now we have that all blocked in, I'm going to go straight over with uh, the Reclan Flesh Shade again. Where are we? Yep, so that's the Flesh Shade. Um, and then this is not going to be a wash all over, this is going to be a more sort of um, pin wash, I guess. So we should be able to do this on the camera. So this is using my fine brush. Um, I'm just making sure there's not a lot on there. And then just kind of trying to get the the recesses. Now this doesn't wick around quite like um, maybe an oil wash does for instance. So you have got to kind of push it into the direction you want but for the splits in the fingers there it's it's very good to, to use. I'm terribly sorry I can't I don't know what's going on with the camera today I just cannot get anything right but I hope you can get enough out of this to sort of get an idea and you'll soon see when you try uh, try this yourself. I think it's because he's at such an angle and I've got such a tight focus. Um, so that there I'm going over the legs just with an extremely thin almost glaze this is called in the uh, wargaming world I think which you can make with acrylic paints or with washes which is a very very it's, it's just it's a filter basically exactly how we use it in armor um, and sometimes in aircraft a filter it's just again just changing the shade slightly and this is what I mean with the flesh tones I tend to just keep doing this one to the other until it starts to look right and you're just building up the layers and because these paints are thin it's always changing so you have one thing to the next is always a little bit different because the layer paint will show through what you've just done again and you might have put it on a little, a little bit thinner and then it will show more through um, and of course this is a desert pilot so uh, we really want to show some tanned skin as opposed to uh, you know if he's in Europe in the winter um, Africa in the summer he's gonna have got a bit of a tan I imagine so uh, we want to try and you know get a bit of bronzing to the skin I suppose and then now up on the face I'm actually going to just put it back in around the recesses again and try and get it down the side of the nose 
and certainly down on that open um, collar there, open neck to the shirt um, and where some of that black's gone over I can fill in a bit as well and up around the side we don't really want to worry about that anymore those crisp lines you can kind of get by using this as a pin wash just around the edge and it should sort of give you the definition you want same down there on the neck so I think you can start to see what I'm doing I can, I'd can. i like to get a pool of it just to sit in between the lips as well and actually dry like that there we go, something like that and then we can cut that all back once it's dry with the flesh tone so we'll be back in a minute now for me that is plenty good enough He's going to go in this uh, Spitfire and uh, that's going to be no problem. So that's the techniques I used there. That's the basic principle behind it. And all I did here was mixed up, uh, what was it? Um, we had uh, Yushabti Bone, which I mixed with a white and um, did all the pale webbing there. And, and the straps and where I went over it I just then touched up with some of the khaki colour and then went all over it with the Agrax Earth Shade like we've been doing and then just finished off by putting Agrax, Agrax Earth Shade in some of the recesses. Now you could go, you know, you could spend another couple of hours on this and try and touch in some pupils and all of that and um, you know it would all help to give a lift but for what I'm building it's not really necessary but the, you know the pilot did need to be painted so I'm perfectly happy with that. Um, Maybe in the future we'll revisit this and try it again. Uh, one interesting thing on trying to do the glass for the goggles. Um, I looked at a reference picture and you could see right through them to see the cap. So it sort of works from, from my point of view as I look at it. That's what I think of. I've just kind of done a, a more duller colour of the actual hat as if you're looking through some glass. So hopefully that works. We'll see. You know, it's basic stuff. It's all very simple and hopefully it's been of interest and again something a little bit different to look at and I'm sure many of you would put off actually painting figures and um, hopefully this might make you think, you you know, you'll have a go. Obviously I used a very fine brush to uh, do all of these straps and my only um, advice to you is uh, paint the strap. If you go over then paint the um, base colour up to the strap and if you go over again try again and just keep doing it until it's all as sharp as you're happy with and then tighten up any of the edges with uh, a final dark wash like the uh, earth shade for instance and that will get you there so i hope that's been of interest and um, if you've enjoyed what you've seen please consider subscribing to the channel as usual stay tuned and uh, we'll be back shortly with another video